I'm Jerry Gross along with Gus Johnson, former NBA great, all-star with the Baltimore Bullets, and we're awaiting the first NBA telecast regionally right here in Portland, Oregon. Gus, as you look at this one, the Jazz up against the world champs, how do you see it? Jerry, there's not a lot you can say about Portland. They have the best record in the uh, National Basketball Association. They're number uh, one in team defense. They've got about four or five starters and uh, double figures, and uh, I look for a very exciting game from them. No question about it. The New Orleans Jazz come in with Slick Watts now, Gail Goodrich, and, of course, the number one scorer in the NBA, and that is Pete Maravich, and we'll watch for this one. And, you know, it should be, Gus, it should be a very exciting basketball game. The NBA on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by the new 1978 Chevrolets, now at your Chevy dealers everywhere. The Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Sears Die Hard Batteries, with starting power you can count on. We're ready to go with a play-by-play and all the action here. In the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon, Aaron James, 6'8", will be one of the forwards for New Orleans. Chuck Robinson, one of the great rebounders in the NBA, the greatest right now. He'll be working at the other forward. Rich Kelly, a big guy in the middle, number 53, is out there. Stumpy Goodrich, Gail Goodrich, formerly of the Los Angeles Lakers, and you saw Pete Maravich come out at the last minute. Now you'll hear a great roar go up as the Portland Trailblazers will be introduced individually. And away they go, and the fans already are standing. Let's look at the fans. Ah, oh, they've got it all right here, Gus Johnson. They have it all. I'm telling you, that blazer mania is something. I rode over on the bus last night for the Detroit game and uh, was with an old, elderly group of people, and they were fantastic talking about making songs and etc. They say here in Portland, Oregon, two straight in 78. And they'll do it. Portland, Oregon. That's Bob Grove, 6'6", six, six, out of Long Beach State. One of the great shooters in here is Maurice Lucas. They holler, Lou. It sounds like a boo, but they're talking about Maurice Lucas at 6'9", on a Marquette. Here's the big guy, Bill Walton from La Mesa. And he's a man that makes it work for him. He sure does, Gus. He does it all. He can pass, rebound, a very intelligent player. And on the back line, here's a guy that's a tough one, Lionel Holland, out of Arizona State. Super athlete. You know, you can question his... Uh, judgment sometime, but you can never question Lionel's heart. And Dave Dwarczyk, the little guy who just came off the bench number, as you see across the way, number 32 is Walton, and Dave Dwarczyk, number 13, and the officials, John Vanek, the gentleman on your left, and Bernie Fryer, the man on your right. Vanek, 17 years in the NBA. Bernie Fryer in his second year in the league. Fryer will be wearing, on the far side of the field, number 8, and John Vanek wearing number 9. So the Trailblazers shooting field goal percentage of 49.5%. Only one team in the NBA history has ever shot 50% or better from the floor for a full year. That was the Milwaukee Bucks, 51%. You're looking at the matchups right now. It'll be Rich Kelly in the middle, in the dark uniforms, the New Orleans Jazz, and in the white uniforms, the world champions, Bill Walton. Walton to jump also. That's Maurice Lucas with it. A great pattern offense. They can run when they have to. They have good plays, good pattern when they are stopped from running. And they're very patient. They wait for what they want. That's Torjic, one of the better shooters in the NBA. That's Holland's little left-hander. You watch him from outside trying to get it in. Maurice Lucas for the double pump. Now New Orleans moves it up. That's Gail Goodrich with it. He tried to go to Rich Kelly, stolen away by Torjic. Lucas goes back to Bobby Gross. Well, they do hustle. At Hollins with a miss. Hollins with another chance. And a whistle on the play. There's the first foul of the ball game. Good play. He took the shot. He saw where it was at. He followed it, came in, took the second shot, and got the foul on it. It'll be a shooting foul. Lionel Hollins, who was drafted number one by Portland. 24 years old. 6'3", 185. Hollins a good shooter. Makes a real big play for him. He made the big one last night against Detroit as they stole one against the Pistons. Sure did. Lionel Holland, 75% at the line. 80% is considered above average. That's Kelly taking it off. Rich Kelly, formerly of Stanford. Now Goodrich brings it up. He's been as hot as a firecracker of late. 
teaming with Pete Maravich on the back line. Forzig has Goodrich. Lionel Hollins will try and stop Maravich. They go in the middle with a big man, Rich Kelly. He'll alternate with Joe Merriweather in the corner. Missing the shot out in the corner. Aaron James. The rebound Joe by Goodrich. Dale Goodrich. Follow that in. Put it right back in. Goodrich. Now makes it a 2-1 to one Jazz lead over the Blazers. Forzik has it intercepted by Maravich. He's against Hollins with a 2-on-1 to Goodrich. He'll get two, Gus. Good strong move to the hoop. He waited, protected the ball with his body, and got the foul. So Gail Goodrich, formerly of UCLA, now 34 years of age, going to the line, always a great shooter, 80.5% lifetime, had an Achilles tendon in the preseason last year in surgery in February. Only played 27 games. I think he and Gale kind of complement one another because it takes a load off of Gale, I mean, off of uh, Pete's uh, game, not having to handle the ball as much. So Goodrich pops him in. Goodrich now with four points. It is four to one as the Jazz lead in this game. And that's Walton inside taking the loop pass from Bob Gross. Truck Robinson over to James. James down under, trying to get away from Maurice Lucas. Can't do it. Outside the pistol, Pete Maravich. Missing his first shot of the afternoon. Forzik coming up off Lucas with the ball. Dave Forzik, he can drive, uses his body well. Gross saves it over to Walton. Well, I'll tell you, that's one tremendous thing about this ball club. They look for that man. They, they're, not, they're not afraid to pass that basketball. It's 4-3. to three. New Orleans with the ball, leading the world champion Portland Trailblazers. We have 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. That truck Robinson whacks it in from outside. He's going to have to do that. They're going to have to match him. They're going to have to look for him against Lucas. They're going to have to be a real good fight. Robinson at 6'7 against Lucas at 6'9. That's Walton in the hole against Kelly. Walton at 6'11. You don't see the left-handed hook that often. Robinson takes it off and we have a whistle. A violation call against truck Robinson. Double dribble. I'll tell you, they're sagging back in the middle, and uh, it's making it very difficult for Bill to pass the ball inside to his men cutting off. They constantly move, and they need that movement. Last night in watching Detroit, Bob Lanier really muscled Walton underneath, Gus. And, and it, it, it hurt him. It hurt him, no question. That's Lucas. That's going to be the matchup right there, Lucas and uh, Truck Robinson. Lucas has two, Walton has two, and the Blazers now trail by the score of 6-5. to five. The NBA in Portland, Oregon. We start the regional basketball telecast again. Another exciting year. Pete Maravich, the leading scorer on a mismatch. There's a mismatch underneath, and there it is. Kelly up against the guard. Lionel Hollins missing the shot, and Walton with a rebound over to Hollins. The world champs with a great series against Philadelphia, dropping the first two and winning four straight and becoming the champs. That's why you saw the banner on the roof hanging down here in Portland. Maurice Lucas. Rich Kelly with a rebound. Maravich with an underhanded pass over to Stumpy, and Goodrich goes for two. Well, I'll tell you, that was an excellent pass. Very well, very well played. New Orleans up by three with 8.50 to go. First quarter of action. A sellout crowd. They have sold out throughout the remainder of the year here in Portland. No more tickets. They've sold them out, and they have a movie theater where they show on closed circuit some of the games here at home. Bill Walton. He's going to have to start hitting that shot. He hasn't been shooting it well at all in the last few games. And uh, in order for them to be effective, he's got to hit that. No question about it. Back comes Forzik over to Walton again. He loses the dribble and Chuck Robinson steers it. And Forzik steers it back. Walton has been in a shooting slump, hitting only 42.5%. Yes, yes. Violation called against Portland. Bringing the ball back now. We'll see Goodrich what he can do against Forzik. Got the left-handed jump shot. Maravich can shoot from anywhere on the court. And Chuck Robinson, tough inside on the boards. Gets the screen. Set the pick up for Hollins. To Kelly, back over to Maravich. Walton with the rebound. Forzik, Gross, Bob Gross, great shooter in the playoff. Wisely draws the foul. Yes, very good move. He had lost uh, his dribble, and he had no other choice but to go to the hoop. And if the man had a played position, he'd have been fine. He picked... He picked the ball up here, and he didn't have any place else to go. If the man of the state stationary would have got the offensive foul. So Bob Gross goes to the foul line where he hits 78.5%. Drafted number two by Portland. And a most underrated ball player. That's 78.5% is his lifetime, so you can see he's having a better year this year from the charity stripe. He got 22 of 29 in the last two... 22 of 29 from the field in the last two games against Philadelphia. Incredible in the clutch. 
That makes it now 9-8. to eight. The Blazers lead as Kelly has it in the hole against Walton. He has a height advantage over to Robinson. Now to Maravich. Walton again with a rebound. Holland brings it up. Hit the key bucket. They're only getting one shot at that hoop down there. They're, they're playing good. Collins hit the key bucket last night to break it open in the closing moments. Detroit had one and blew one. They won a ball game in here, Gus. 13 seconds to go, down by four. And Portland ripped off six straight to win a game, I think, against Chicago. We sure did. They sure did. The fans here go bananas when they get close. It's unreal. Gross with a shot, missed. Maravich has the ball as Goodrich grabbed the rebound. And it's hit by Gross, who backs it over to Twardzik. That's Twardzik with his club leading by one. Knocked away by Gross to Lucas. Lucas won't miss many days. Collins, Collins. That's what moving the ball does for you. Looking for the open man. This, this team is not afraid to pass that ball. Blazers 11, Jazz 8. A win today would be the 39th straight in this building for Portland. Outside, Chuck Robinson whacks it in there. That makes it 11 to 10 as New Orleans hangs tough. Collins bringing it up, beats Maravich, back over to Gross. Jerry, that's team basketball. They're moving that basketball around. There's no way in the world New Orleans can beat them. Bob Gross hitting 54.5% from the field. Makes it now 13-10 to 10 as Portland leads over New Orleans. Rick Kelly going to Maravich. Maravich finally cracks one. His first two of the evening, Pete Maravich. I think the, most, the majority of their shots have come from out far. They haven't had that much penetrating to the hoop. Walton goes down in the franchise with him. He hurt his knee last night, and you could hear a pin drop here, Gus. Just as quiet. It was it was unbelievable. He sat on the floor, and, I mean, it just wasn't anything. 6.18 to go. The Blazers lead 13-10. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, three exciting events, including highlights of Super Skates 4, featuring some of the world's best amateur and pro skaters in their most demanding routines. JoJo Starbuck will be on hand, along with Ken Shelley, Tyler Cranston, the Canadian champion, and Linda Fratiani, winner of last year's U.S. and World Championships. She's only 16 years old. I think you'll enjoy it. That's next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Gus Johnson, it's now 13-12. to 12. The Blazers leading the Jazz. Your thoughts on the first few moments of this one? Well, I'll tell you, uh, what's happening is that uh, they're taking uh, too many perimeter shots, the Jazz are right now. And they're only getting one shot at the hoop, and Portland is uh, beating them back down the court on a fast break. Now let's watch in the white uniforms the Portland Trail Blazers. That's Walton looking to the hoop. Last night he didn't do that. That's just what he's got to do. He's, he's such a great ball player. He's so unselfish. And by being so, he passes up many shots looking for the pass. Walton on the year. Walton on the year is averaging 19 points. He's been shooting 51.5% from the field. That makes it 15 to 12. Goodrich trying to get it up. And Walton up the ladder. Takes it away from one man. James gets it back and scores. Aaron James. Good play. One of the very few times that they got a second shot at the hoop. He's a four-year veteran. That's Lionel Holland's back. Hollins makes it now the Blazers 17 and the Jazz 13. He seems to be right there when you need that big hoop. So the Blazers have their biggest lead of the afternoon. They're on top by three. The action coming your way from Oregon. We're in Portland. The start of the NBA telecast regionally. Rich Kelly out of Stanford cracks one. Big outside. men moving out to guard position. <laughs> so we've had both big men display they can shoot outside. That's Forzik driving by the big man. And Kelly with a great defensive play loses no. the ball. Quick whistle on this play right here. Uh, the ball actually came up towards it, and he was out of bounds. Bill Walton gets credit for two. Now it's 19 to 16, and again, the Portland Trailblazers have their biggest lead. That's Chuck Robinson. Watch him inside on the boards. He's tough. Lucas will try and keep him off the glass on the offensive board. That's Forzik with a steal of Maravich. Over to Holland. Holland with a left-handed layup. That's just good, plain, pressure, hustle-type defense. These guys, they don't care about it. They think that ball is gold. Their defense off-times keys their offense. 21-16, to 16, a five-point lead for Portland. Their biggest ball. They're in the first quarter, four and a half minutes to go. Neither team in foul trouble. James misses it, blows the layup. Out of bounds, it goes safe by Torzik over to Lucas, now to Holland. Got a nice break there. 
Over to Walton. Walton, the bad shot. Might have been deflected. Walton really looking to the hoop more this afternoon than last night. I think maybe uh, he realized that or his teammates or Coach Sharman realized it. Okay, here he comes now across the middle with his hook. He gets fouled right here. Rich Kelly committing the foul. That'll be against the Jazz, their fourth team foul. That is his second. The Blazers only have one team foul. So on the next foul, the Jazz will be in foul trouble, and the Blazers will go for the penalty situation. Very big factor in the strategy of basketball guys. And these are big points he's getting here. They are, they're very excellent from the free throw line. Bill Walton at the foul line. The big guy has done it all. Tremendous effort against the Philadelphia 76ers in the World Series of Pro Basketball. <laughs> Kelly almost gets it, loses it. Gross tries twice on the tip and misses it. Robinson's pass intercepted by towards it. Stolen back by Maravich. Maravich one on five. He's still going to go for it. Tries to get it inside. James has it off his fingers out of bounds. Well, I think Pete's a little overpassing. He's got to look to the hoop more. He's got to become the floor leader out there now. Uh, trucks being forced way out on the floor. He's shot nothing in but jumpers. Now the battle between Rich Kelly and Walton underneath as they begin to muscle. Towards it goes underneath, finds the open man. Walton again. I tell you, he just keeps coming and keeps coming. Eventually, he has to wear you down. They're standing here in Portland, Oregon. A timeout has been called. 3.43 left to go in the first quarter. The Portland Trailblazers, 24, the New Orleans Jazz, 16. Next Saturday and Sunday on this CBS station, you'll have an opportunity to watch the coverage of the PGA Tour. We'll be teeing it off on the 78th start, the $200,000 Phoenix Open. We'll be watching Tom Watson and Lanny Watkins and Johnny Miller and Dave Stockton, J.C. Sneed, and the colorful Lee Trevino will be on hand. Coverage starts Saturday. 2.30 in the afternoon, concludes on Sunday, beginning at noon, live right here on CBS. In the dark uniforms, the New Orleans Jazz, Gail Goodrich brings it up. It's 24-16, to 16, the Blazers lead. Portland is in the white uniforms. You're looking now at Johnny Davis, who had just come off the bench, guarding Gail Goodrich. That's Chuck Robinson against Walton on a switch, and Kelly has it inside on the mismatch against Lucas, but blows it, and you see the rebound hauled down by Walton. He goes after that defensive board. Lionel Holland. You can question his judgment at times, but you cannot question his heart. Uh, he can shoot it. No doubt about it. Hitting 42.5% on the year. He's averaged 14.5 points, and it's the Blazers up by 10. Their largest lead. The Blazers' backcourt men really trigger at times the scrambling type of game that Portland needs to get them back when they're behind. That's a well, charge. They've, they've got their hands in everything, you know, and they depend on the big man like it was when... Uh, Okay, here we come down. Hollins has given a ball up to Walton, goes through, and charges into Kelly that's just standing there waiting on the play. Good call. As you can see, he had the defensive position. That left foot did just get down in time. Here's Slick Watts in, formerly of Seattle. Has a great attitude. Was traded. You might think he's unhappy. He was a, well, he was a number one sports figure in Seattle, Washington. They traded him. Watts is now number 14. That'll be only permanently. He used to have number 13. Very quick. Good penetrator. Slick Watts trying to find room. they got to make something happen. Their offense has been stuttering. That's Chuck Robinson. Boy, I tell you, he can shoot that ball. He's moving around, shooting a jumper good, and Slick come in and got him assist right away. An eight-point lead now. It is 26 to 18, and Hollins is cracked on the arm as he goes for the shot on the right side. Watts came over from Seattle for a number one draft choice in 1981. Okay, here he comes now. Uh, Hollins moving the ball down. He's going to go up for the jumper. He delays when he goes up in the air right here. Slick comes by. He double pumps. And he gets a foul. Great opportunity. Great example of drawing the foul. Great body control. Lionel Hollins does not say much. Very quiet young man. Doesn't say much. Does it all. Seventh in steals in the NBA last year. And gets the job done. Oh, he had 47 steals in the playoffs. That was tops in the NBA last year. It is now 28-18. to 18. The lead is 10 for Portland again. 2.20 to go. We have five team fouls on the Jazz and one, only one against the Blazers. Larry stealing the ball game. Larry's got a very bad foot visiting with him in the trainer's room. Well, Gus and I both talking to him. He's got a ligament problem. And he was, I didn't think he'd play. Larry Steele, formerly of Kentucky, playing in the game. That's He's Bill Walton. Scrapper, though. Look at him scrap for that, and he fouled to do it on the play. Got Aaron James from behind. 
James had the inside position on him that time. So that is only the second team foul. Two minutes and three seconds to go. First quarter, 28 to 18. With the ball, the New Orleans Jazz, they are trailing the team in white Portland. I think they brought Watts in for some penetration. They have nothing going to the hoop whatsoever. Also in the game, they have the big guy in the middle, Joe Merriweather. That's Slick's first two. Johnny Davis was on the back line, brought in as we told you a moment ago, teaming now with Lionel Hollins, Lucas over to Walton. I think Bill stepped on the end line. Yeah, he did, he did that time, that time. Too far up underneath. Gus, you led the league one year in broken backboard. <laughs> That was a long time ago. I long they time. actually had to pass a rule against you, didn't they? Yes, they did, that you had to have an uh, extra backboard in the gym at all times. Ah, those were the great days. 1.30 to go, first quarter, an eight-point lead for Portland. That's Gail Goodrich against the big guy, which means there's a mismatch underneath. Merriweather is guarded underneath by Hollins, and they don't get it to him. Got it. Robinson, three seconds to go. Did they get it off in time? No, three no, seconds violation. No. That's what I'm saying. They just keep that pressure down on them, and there's nothing they can do. They're forcing turnovers. They're not looking for the for the shot anymore. It seems they're just passing time away. 117 to go, first quarter. The Blazers with the ball in the lead by eight. That is Hollins against Watts. Larry Steele up against Aaron James underneath. That's Robinson trying to muscle the big guy, Lucas, who backs in. Slick helps him out, and he misses in tight of the rebound. Tap back, but stolen away by Hollins. Lucas tries to dunk it and misses it. Lucas is all right, just his dignity is upset, and here's Watts with it. For sure, he wanted that when he went after that hoop, too. Robinson. Robinson, too, from outside. He's got eight points. He could, he's shooting the ball very well for him. I didn't know he was that good of a jump shotter from out front. And I think the book on him is just that. That's Larry Steele. And the rebound taken away underneath by Robinson again. Robinson is a better rebounder this year than Walton. That surprise you? Stolen away by Hollins. Oh, those quick hands. Hollins coming up with Lucas. Let's see what he does. And an offensive foul against Hollins. John Vanek makes the call, and the crowd does not okay, like Okay, Slick it. Watts came down and played very good position defense. He beat Hollins to this position right here and established his position. Well, there's the offensive foul. Two team fouls against Portland. Five already against the Jazz, as we told you. They'll go for the last shot. 13 seconds left to go in the period. Who will take it? Will Goodrich take it? Will they go inside? The guess is Goodrich might take it. He's the best outside shooter. He's going to take it. The rebound taken away. That's Owens underneath. It'll count if it goes, but it didn't go, as you saw. That's the end of the first period in Portland, Oregon. The Jazz battling against the Trailblazers. And at the end of one, it's Portland 28, New Orleans 22. We need practice to be ready to do things right when it counts. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and I always want to be ready for the real thing. That's why I'm learning CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Someday, someone's life might depend on my knowing what to do when it counts. Would you know what to do? For more information, ask your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. An announcement from the American Heart Association in cooperation with the NBA. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Basketball Association. We go to the second quarter. The Blazers lead 28-22. to Jerry Gross along with Gus Johnson. Some substitutions, Gus. Lloyd Neal in the ballgame. He's still got the bad leg, but he is tough when he's well. He uh, comes in and does a very ample job for uh, Walton, or if he comes in for Luke, he's uh, a solid ball player, and uh, he plays well. Doesn't make very many mistakes. Tom Owens is still in the middle. He's 6'10". He is playing in the hole now against Joe Merriweather, also 6'10". That's Robinson up against Lloyd Neal. And Slick Watts guarded by Johnny Davis. On the far side, in for the first time is Paul Griffin, a two-year man, playing in the hole temporarily against Larry Steele. Maravich forcing the shot. That's Griffin with the rebound. Oh, he went up for the shot. Now let's see, they've called an offensive foul. Yeah, I think him. he should have went right onto the hoop with the shot. That way he might have drew the foul on him. Number five draft choice for New Orleans, the big blonde kid in the corner, guarding Bob Gross, number 30, Paul Griffin. That's Lloyd Neal. He is tough inside, good rebounder. That's Johnny Davis, very quickly, and blocked by Slick Watts. But it's taken back. they got to get it up before 10 seconds are over. They do. Tom Owen. Mighty big hoop. So it is now 30-22. to 22. The lead is eight. 
And that's Robinson. He hits two outside. Rebounded underneath by Johnny Davis. Down to the floor is Maravich. He's all right. Blocked partially on a fine play by Robinson. And out of bounds she goes. He was standing there waiting on that one there. The leading scorer in the first two periods, Walton had 11 and Hollins had 11. Top man was Chuck Robinson with eight. For New Orleans, Davis misses inside the rebound. Picked up by Chuck Robinson. He's doing a superb job inside on the defensive boards. That's Maravich trying to get a custom on the back line now to Slick Watts, who just was acquired from Seattle. Watts who led the attack in Seattle, if you recall, trying to do it here. Mirrorweather. Lloyd Neal. Steele giving it over to Gross. In tight now to Owens, the backup center behind Walton, and he's found in the act of shooting. Okay, here we go now. Bobby comes down, gives the ball up to Tom inside. He fakes and gets a foul right here on Merriweather. Largest lead in the game by New Orleans was three early in the contest. The biggest lead so far was ten points. For the Blazers, they're now up by nine, and you're looking at Tom Owens, who played in the ABA for a number of years. Owens has become the backup center behind Bill Walton. Robinson with a rebound. Owens out of South Carolina. That's Maravich with the ball. Merriweather going from 16. Good. They've got to start moving the ball a lot more and uh, penetrating the hoop. They've got to get something going to the hoop. A seven-point lead for Portland. 31-24, 10-15 to go. We're in the second quarter. Johnny Davis working the ball well. Watch Portland on offense. Normally everyone moves. Lloyd Neal banks it in. That's the key to their offense, too, is that they never stop moving. When Walton's in there, whoever's playing that hole, they give that ball right up. Interesting to watch them now. They have moved Larry Steele as a guard against Maravich, so he's a swing man. Good pick and roll set up and drop underneath on a pass that was really a pretty good pass. Very nice pass. Uh, I think Merriweather was looking to the hoop before he uh, looked at the ball. Well, the kid from Southern Illinois couldn't handle it, and it goes over as a turnover, and it's 33-24, to 24, 9.40 to go. Here's Watts with a steal. He should go all the way and beat Gross. Gross with a great block, and they don't call a foul. Did he hit him with a body? What do you think? No, I think he laid and got that one just as he released it. He could see him timing it. Bingo from the corner. That's what makes them so tough, boy. They take the ball from you, come back, and get something out of it. There's a pick set up and foul on the play. Oh, it's really dumped Maravich on the play. Pete Maravich has had only two points. Here's a first quarter score, Seattle 21, Golden State 25. Watch the replay here with Gross coming on the left. Okay, this is what you call just perfect timing right here, going to the hoop. He did not block it off the board at the line, Maravich. And they start to, they start to sound off with a, a, a horn behind the basket, and Maravich stops. So Maravich didn't want any part of it. Like uh, for them to ring that bell just as he was about to shoot that ball, though. Maravich averaging 28 points a game. He's the number one scorer in the NBA. He has been held down to five points. 35 to 27. Jack Ramsey before the game. As Neal shoots outside, tipped back over to him. Tipped back by Gross. Over and to Steele every, now. He's everywhere on the floor. Gross moves well without the ball. That's the former Kentucky star. Steele over to Gross. Good corner shooter. Bob Gross. And the lead is again 10 for Portland. Maravich bringing it up. That's Robinson. Griffin really fought from behind Owens to grab the rebound. There's a lot of muscle there. Hits the open man, and that's a dunk by Robinson. You can see that one coming. He hung right in there, and this is what they've got to do. They've got to get more than one shot at the offensive hoop. The hard-nosed kid, Griffin, inside. Yeah, he looks like he's very strong, aggressive inside. 37 to 29, Portland leading. Bob Gross giving it over to Tom Owens, who tries to drive on Merriweather. Very good move by the big fella. He come across there, and he lost his footing and still got the hoop. So Owens, who played with five different clubs in six years in the ABA, comes in and makes his mark as Maravich counters. Maravich with seven. And Pete's Owens has have scored to start, five. Basically. The lead is again eight. In the corner, Steele misses one. Rebound to Merriweather. He goes over to Maravich. I'll tell you, he's a man that can do it all. He can break you wide open at any given moment. 7.50 to go, second quarter, and the Blazers lead the Jazz by six. That's Neal, a little farther out than his normal range, and the rebound by Griffin. 
Now Maravich bringing it up. Maravich is seventh in assists in the league this year. He got the pick. Robinson set it in a foul coming off behind Owens is Merriweather on the play. Owens had good position there that time. There was no way that uh, Merriweather could have got the rebound. He should have just stayed there and let him have the ball. That's a great example of a loose ball foul. And it is the second team foul against the Jazz in the quarter with 7.35 to go. And the Blazers have won. And that's There's a timeout. Gus on the field. We'll talk about what's going on on the court when we get back. Next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, we have three exciting events, including World Cup skiing. From Zweisel, West Germany, Ingmar Stenmark. From Svenska, from Sweden. He's the man to watch in the slalom, in the giant slalom. And there's a fellow by the name of Phil Mayer, 20 years old, of White Pass, Washington. The major threat from the United States. You're watching Dave Twardzik and Johnny Davis bring it up. 7.30 to go. We're in the second quarter. 39-33 to 33 as Portland leads. Neal up front, working along now with Bob Gross. In the hole, Bill Walton back in the ball game. That's Walton underneath, looking for the offensive move. Johnny Davis, great quickness. Has it blocked, but he might have been fouled on the play. Johnny Davis was fouled. He'll go to the line. Out of Dayton, drafted number two by Portland. 22 years old. He's very, very quick. He showed his quickness on that move, plus and he can get up in the air also. He did a great job when Dave Porzik was injured in the playoffs last year. Would you believe it? Last year he was just a rookie, and he played uh, with tremendous confidence in the playoff series. He gets them both, and with 7.17 to go in the second quarter, Portland leads 41-33. to That's Watts bringing it up against Porzik. Watch Porzik's left hand, and with the body, it's count. It counts, and he's fouled. He cracked him with a body. Very good move on Watts' part. Gave him a nice little fake, a double pump, and uh, went up with the jumper. You're looking at Portland with a record of 30-5 and five on the year. They lead the Pacific Division. On the other hand, the club that they are playing for the first time this year, incidentally, New Orleans, they are 16-21, and 21, six games back in the Central Division. Watts at the line, and Neal with a rebound. Now Torzik brings it up. Torzik... The best shooter in the NBA right now. Doesn't shoot very much, though. That's their bread and butter play right there. I'm sure that he gets at least four or five layups a night off of that pass from Walton. The old give and go to big Bill Walton. That's one of the reasons Walton is so highly regarded in the NBA. 6.46 to go, second quarter. 43 to 35. Maravich had to alter his shot because of Walton, and he ends up with the ball. That's Griffin looking inside. That's Watts in tight. Slick Watts. Turn around, fadeaway jumper. I don't know if that's his shot or not, but he got two. Six and a half to go. We're in the second quarter. 43 to 37. The lead is six for Portland. Underneath Walton. Up against Joe Merriweather. Merriweather not as strong. Quite quick, however. Walton looking for the pass. Does it so well. Now takes the 14-footer. And drops it home. Nice soft touch. He waited. Made the good move. Went to the hoop with a strong jumper. Walton has 13 points, and it's 45 to 37. On this CBS regional telecast in Portland, 5.50 to go. We're in the first half. Walton with a rebound. Johnny Davis with great acceleration. Bad pass and out of bounds he goes. Good intention, good idea, but it just didn't come up. We have a timeout on the court. Five minutes and 51 seconds left to go. We're in the second quarter of action in Portland, Oregon. The score, the Trailblazers 45, the Jazz 37. We're back here in Portland, 5.51 to go in the second quarter, 45-37, the Trailblazers lead. Gus Johnson, there's an interesting sideline in this afternoon's game, and that would be in rebounding between the two big men. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Walton has seven rebounds up to this point, and uh, Robinson has five. Now, Robinson's been averaging like about ten rebounds a game. He's had, uh, in his last 35 or 37, he's had ten, averaged more than ten rebounds or double figures in each one of those games. He has played three more games, and he's almost averaged 200 more rebounds. Not average, but gathered a total of 200 more than Walton this year. He's done a great job. Number 21, the guy with the ball right now. Watch him go to the hoop. He went right to the hoop and got fouled. Very strong move to the hoop. Portland 30-5, and five, the best record in the NBA, and if they win this one today... Okay, he's got the ball inside now. He's making his move. He's coming back with his left hand, and there's a foul right here. Very good move. If Portland wins this one today, Jack Ramsey will officially be, mathematically, the coach 
in Atlanta for the All-Star game. And that's Jack right there. What a job he has done with this club. Which could possibly give Portland seven individuals in the All-Star game. You're Believe right. That or not. You're right you because know. they have the, they have the trainer already right. there. The trainer's there, and sure, Jack will take his assistant along. And uh, Walton, Gross, Gross, Lucas, Lucas, and possibly Hollins or Porzig. Boy, that's some representation yes, sir. For, for a great city. It has turned this city all around. They are united with one thought. It has Blazer, that old Blazer mania. Isn't that what they call it? That's what they call it. It has that old college enthusiasm. 45 39, 520 to go, second quarter. The team of the ball in white, Portland leading the New Orleans Jazz. That's Walton finding Neal all alone. Very good pass. He waited again for what he wanted. They're going to catch him on the top of that lane, though, hooking with the elbow. Nine assists last night against Detroit. What a battle between he and Lanier. Lanier played very well against him and outscored him. Oh, what a great backhanded pass by Paul Griffin, but a travel on the play against Maravich. Very nice pass, and uh, I think just that intimidation of Walton being there, which he does so well, caused Pete to travel. The lead is eight for the men with the ball, the Portland Trailblazers. Merriweather up against Walton in the hole. Hollins all alone gets the pass. There he is, in for two. He was so alone, he couldn't believe it. He hesitated on the shot. Watts got picked and fell down on the play. Maravich bringing it up against Hollins. What a battle Hollins had last night. With Eric Money. I mean, physical, most of the evening. Paul Griffin. I like him. He's shooting the ball very well. He's aggressive on the boards. Paul Griffin scoring, making it now 49-41. to 41. The lead is eight for the club with the ball. The Trailblazers. Walton really looking to the hoop. I can remember Jack McMahon, guys, telling me he saw Walton play in high school. He's one of the best big men shooting outside in high school he'd ever seen. When he's shooting the ball like that, there's no way in the world that you can beat him because he can take you inside and beat you or outside. Incredible, yet he does not look to the hoop that much. Maravich shows he can score outside. Anytime. Pete, Pete now has pumped his average up to 28 on the year, and he scored 11 here after a slow start with two in the first period. 51-43 to 43 the score. Towards it. Rebound underneath by Merriweather. Over to Watts. Merriweather is down, and so is Forzik, and a traveling violation going to be called against Slick Watts. Rich Kelly comes back in the ball game at center. Coming out is Joe Merriweather. Lucas comes in also, Maurice Lucas. They call him the enforcer here, but that's a bad nickname for him. I think it is. Uh, if you know the man, uh, there's no way you could call him an enforcer. He's a big man. He plays with authority. He plays, and he demands respect on the floor. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I don't know who gave him that handle, but it doesn't do him justice. He's, uh, he's a fine, aggressive, clean playing forward. Hard worker. No question about it. Maurice Lucas out of Marquette. I guess they gave it to him after he decked Artis Gilmore, getting a couple of scraps a couple of years ago. But uh, he is, uh, he's a fine, clean player. That's Walton moving on, Rich Kelly. Somebody must have said something to him because he did not look for the hoop like that last night. Last night, night Bill Walton was so upset with himself, even though they won the game, and so upset with the style of play that he, he, was, he went home banging doors. And Jack Ramsey said before the game, he felt that Walton was upset because he wasn't in the flow of things. And now, he he's, now he's in the flow of things. Bill Walton with the ball, back over to Holland. They just make it look so easy. It's like a basketball clinic out here. 55 to 43. The lead is 12. Three minutes to go. This is the biggest lead enjoyed right now by Portland. A clinic it is indeed. But look where they're starting it with the ball. They're way out with the ball. They cannot get down inside. Wojcik fouls in. Jack Ramsey doesn't like the call. Coming into the ball game, the former Los Angeles Laker, Corky Calhoun. Number 10. We have a timeout. Three minutes flat to go. Second quarter. The score, 55 to 43, the Blazers over the Jazz. The Blazers lead by 12, three minutes to go. And next Sunday, the president of CBS Sports, Bob Wessler, and the executive vice president of CBS Sports, Barry Frank, invite you all to Super Sunday on CBS starting at 10 in the morning. The regional NBA basketball at noon, live coverage of the final round of the Phoenix Open, and then at 1.30. The Super Bowl today, followed at 3 o'clock by Super Bowl 12, Denver against Dallas from the Superdome in New Orleans. So that's Super Sunday on CBS a week from today. And Gus, who do you like, Denver or Dallas? I'll take uh, Dallas. I'm going to ride with all the men that have all those shotguns. Well, i got to go with you. It's like the Dallas Cowboys have a little more offense. But the Broncos are tough on defense. Great linebacker. That's Slick Watts. Trying to get it inside to Chuck Robinson against Maurice Lucas. Tapped away by Lionel Hollins. Griffin's still in the game. 11 seconds to shoot. Maravich guns. 
That's Kelly behind Walton with a rebound. And I think he traveled. Yeah, he did. Up and down. There's that intimidation again. The big man's everywhere in there. They're giving him just one shot at the hoop. 55-43. You see the score. Two minutes and 42 seconds to go. Hey, at halftime, we're going to have a horse contest. That's right. CBS brings you... Each halftime this year, a horse contest with NBA performers. That's Walton missing inside and tipped in. Hollins inside there. What a game Short. Hollins has had. He's got 17 along with Bill Walton. That man with 17. 2.20 to go. Three team fouls on the Jazz and four team fouls on the Blazers. Fine looping pass inside as Rich Kelly gets the little man towards it. And Watts hit him. They took advantage of the mismatch. One of the very few times that they have. So the lead was 14. It's cut back now to 12. That's Corky Calhoun. That's not normally his shot in the corner. Rebounded by Maravich. He moves by Torjic neatly. Oh, soft touch. Boy, you know, he just comes at you. You never know what he's going to do, but that's the advantage he has. Too. Maravich cuts it down now. 13 for Pete Maravich on the afternoon. He cuts the lead to 10. Now Lucas outside. Over to Calhoun. Calhoun against Griffith. Tries against him. And Johnson. Or rather, Robinson pushing off underneath. Perhaps you couldn't see it. Walton Hollard. Robinson with a rebound. Amerovich. Pistol Pete with the guns going. Now with 15. The lead is 8. And if he loads both of them up, we can see something going down the stretch here. He can really fire them. Portland has won 38 in a row on this court. They're 20 and 0 this year in regulation play. Hollins has it knocked away. Off his fingertips, they say. Watts with a good play. Good defensive play by Slick. Followed him there and had the ball with him. So Mr. Seattle, who will become Mr. New Orleans, if things are worked out in the front office in New Orleans, talking about, they're talking about moving him down there. He did such a great job in PR in Seattle. He's now playing with Maravich. Maravich with a scoop shot. Lucas with a rebound with a minute to go in the second quarter. That's Forzik along with Hollins. Great body control. Went to the hoop, let the man go by him, scoop, and laid the ball in. 19 for Lionel Hollins. And it's 59-49 to 49 in favor of Portland. The quiet man showing he can do it. Rich Kelly can't hang on to the rebound as Watts misses. Forzik brings it up three on three. That's Walton with it. Slick Watts, Maravich, 27 seconds to go in the first half. Lucas caught him outside high. You see the time remaining in the first half. The lead right now is 10 for Portland. Well, it wasn't very much that uh, Luke could do on that. Uh, Pete had him beat, had one step on him, so he just ran along and bumped him. Jack Ramsey talking to us before the game, told Gus Johnson and myself, if we can run New Orleans, we can beat them. And they're doing that right now. They're giving them one shot at the hoop. They're forcing them out of their range for the shots. Portland has won five in a row. Maravich countering there from the line. Now has 16, and at the foul line, he's two for two this afternoon. New Orleans has won two in a row. They've been playing fairly well lately. They won three of the last five. Yes. 23 seconds left to go. 59-50. That's the score. No doubt. Looking for the last shot. The Portland Trailblazers. Borgia can hit outside. Doesn't shoot enough to win the crown in the NBA scoring. Yeah, but any one of those guys rate. are capable of getting this last hoop for them. Huh? Four seconds to shoot. Blocked on a great play underneath. Taken away by Chuck Robinson. And that's the... No, the horn has not gone off. We have one second left. One second to go in the first half of play. Who gets the ball? Now John Vanek is approaching the official timer to find out why a buzzer went off. The buzzer should have went off. I don't know what the uh, discrepancy is right now, but they're over there trying to find it out. So they are now trying to find out why the buzzer went off when there's a second left on the clock. That's Jack Ramsey talking with John Vanek. Well, Maravich comes over to find out what's going on. Let's see what they're going to talk about. If the ball is dead, without the buzzer, the game is over. If the ball is alive and the buzzer then dictates what happens. So the ball is dead, and they're going to give him one second left. So let's see what happens. Watts is going to shoot it. It'll count if it goes. Hit a fan in the first row. So that officially marks the end of the first half here now in Portland, Oregon. The home of the world champions. And at the end of two quarters, you see the scoreboard. The Blazers, who led as much as 14 at one time in the second quarter, now have the lead of nine in the score at the end of two periods. 
The Portland Trailblazers 59, the New Orleans Jazz 50. In Portland, Oregon, the score at halftime, the Trailblazers 59, the Jazz 50. At the conclusion of today's game and each of our NBA telecasts during the season, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game. And in conjunction with this award, Chevrolet will be presenting a check for $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the Players College or University. Any student may be eligible to benefit from these scholarship funds. Today's winner will be announced at the end of the telecast. Gus Johnson, you and I will be voting for the MVP, and should we disagree, our producer, Howard Reifschneider, will cast the deciding vote. The NBA on CBS will return after this word from your local station. The advertising business faces its biggest crisis when Edith agrees to do a TV commercial on All in the Family tonight on CBS. Gus Johnson, a nine-point lead for Portland here at halftime. How do you look at the first half? Well, I'll tell you, uh, Portland more or less dictated to uh, New Orleans how they wanted them to play. They uh, forced them out of uh, their range for shots. Uh, they didn't give them very many second opportunities at the goal, and uh, they played a tenacious uh, defense on them and forced uh, a number of turnovers. You know, they're shooting 50%, but you're right, the shots have been mostly outside. Well, that's where they come from, and the amazing part about it is that they're shooting like 500 from the floor, and uh, Portland's only shooting like 42 and a half, and uh, Portland's up by nine. So it tells you something about uh, the game that's going on on the court. And Lionel Hollins is having a whale of an afternoon. <laughs> I'll tell you, the little fellow amazes me for the simple fact is that, uh, like I said earlier in the show, that uh, you can question his judgment, but you cannot question the man's heart. He can come down and turn the ball over, and he'll come back and make the big steal or make the big play for you. Well, we'll have the second half coming up shortly. The second half of this game is coming up here in Portland, Oregon in just one moment. The preceding public service message has been brought to you in cooperation with the National Basketball Association. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. The new 1978 Chevrolets now at your Chevy dealers everywhere. And by Pepsi-Cola and your local Pepsi-Cola bottler. Have a Pepsi day. We're back here in Portland, Oregon. The score at halftime is 59 to 50. Uh, the Trail Blazers lead. You're looking at some of the halftime statistics, and the rebounding's a big factor in this one, Gus Johnson. I would definitely say that uh, the rebounding is a big factor. The simple fact is that New Orleans has seven offensive rebounds. Uh, Portland has 13 offensive rebounds, and uh, that has been a big factor. Like I said, they're not giving them any more than one shot at the hoop, and all their shots are coming from out front. And uh, New Orleans does not have as many shots from the field. You see the difference there, although the Jazz is shooting better statistically, they are shooting outside, they're not getting that second effort. And the individual statistical report is interesting because it's been a whale of an afternoon for the two men high on the totem pole, Lionel Hollins and Bill Walton. Hollins is 8 for 9, and Walton is 8 out of 14. And also Walton has 10 rebounds, and each of them have 4 assists, so they've done it all as you see the individual scoring for the Portland Trail Blazers. They have. They've played a very uh, fine game right up to now. Uh, what has happened, though, is that uh, somehow uh, Maurice Lucas has gotten lost in the shuffle some way. I don't know if you can say it's fair that uh, Truck Robinson has neutralized him or not, but uh, Maurice is only uh, one for seven, and he's only played 16 minutes, and uh, he has uh, not done a, a very good job. Pete Maravich, on the other hand, came alive in that second quarter, limited to only two points in the first period. Maravich now is 7 out of 16. He has the 16 points. And back of him, Chuck Robinson, the man acquired in the trade, has six rebounds to go with his 5 for 8, 24-minute effort in the first two periods. And he has the 12, as you see. Gail Goodrich has played only 12 minutes, was 2 out of 3. The leading assist man is Paul Griffin. Oddly enough, the guy who came off the bench 
He has three assists, and as we told you, the top assist man for Portland was Walton and Hollins, each with four. Well, I think uh, a very instrumental part of that uh, comeback that they made, too, was that uh, when they brought Slick Watts in the game, uh, they attempted to get some penetration, and uh, he kind of set up a couple of plays, and they got a couple rolling to the hoop and a couple of fouls, and uh, that did help them somewhat. Gus Johnson, the last man who sat next to me in an NBA telecast, is now the coach of the Seattle Supersonics, Len Wilkins. And he's doing a super job. I've uh, I worked with Lenny a little bit uh, this summer out in uh, Vegas, and uh, hats off to him. No question about it. He's got that club in third place, and they're winning by one at halftime, playing against Golden State this afternoon. And that game is in Golden State, isn't it? Yes, sir. I believe it is. No, it is not. It is in Seattle. Beg your pardon. A game played in Seattle. And it's a one-point lead at halftime. Incidentally, other games, Washington knocked off New Jersey, 99-98. Boston and Philadelphia, the 76ers won by 3, 94 to 91 in that game. And here we go, is bringing it up is Goodrich against Fordzik. 59 to 50, the lead is 9 for Portland. We're in the third quarter. Maravich pumps from outside of the rebound by Lionel Hollins. Hollins working on the back line up against Maravich and Goodrich, respectively. Walton in the hole against Kelly, passing into Lucas. Lucas is now one out of eight. Last think, touch by whom? Last touch by the men. I think uh, I think Luke's just working a little bit too hard. He hasn't had the shots that he's wanted, and uh, he's forcing them now. Last touch by the men in purple, and so the ball goes over to Portland. Hollins hitting outside. What an afternoon. Lionel Hollins is nine out of ten. And he's picking up right where he left off at halftime. So Hollins, nine out of ten, has pumped in 21 points. Lionel Hollins. 24 years of age. That's outside. Bob Gross working on the big guy with the ball, Aaron James, who shoots way outside. That was out in the corner someplace. That was out in left field. He's got two. That's Lucas looking to the hoop again. He's missed. So he's missed two. And Hollins follows and misses maybe his easiest shot of the afternoon. Lucas finally scores. Well, if you hang in there long enough, it's got to come your way. And he hung in there and proved it. That's four points for Maurice Lucas. And the score is 63-52. to 52. Robinson missing outside, and the rebound taken away by Gross. Over to Twardzik. Twardzik, who can go either side, uses his body well. Rebounded by Robinson. Robinson in the first half. Rebounding very well. Over to Goodrich. Good hustle by Gill. He followed the ball in and got it right back and laid it up. Robinson has seven rebounds in the game. Walton has ten. Ten and a half minutes to go. We're in the third quarter. It's the Blazers 63. The Jazz 59. Biggest lead was 14. That's Walton inside on a fine play. Kelly got lost in the shuffle. Very great example of the pick and roll right there. Executed beautifully. 11-point lead with 10-18 to go. We're speaking to you in the third quarter. That's Gail Goodrich to go inside. And Walton with a foul against Kelly. And Kelly will go to the line. You know, you know, Gus, one of the amazing things is that no one... You just don't find a score consistently with the league stats on the Portland club. No, you don't. And uh, the amazing thing about it is that uh, that's the same way Boston was when they ran off all those championships. They never had anybody uh, in the uh, top 20 as far as scoring. And uh, Portland uh, has nobody in the top 20 in the NBA as far as scoring. Very interesting indeed. Rich Kelly at the line. It's uh, no one in the top 20 no. as, uh, as the Portland Trailblazers are obviously... The Portland Trailblazers are obviously a very fine team. Great team effort. That's Gross bringing it up. Ten minutes to go. 65-55, third quarter. Lionel Hollins trying to elude Maravich. Out of bounds. Walton throws it away. On the back line, Gail Goodrich and Pete Maravich. Maravich has been scoring well of late. That's Kelly taking Walton outside and Goodrich. With a soft touch, but Walton with a rebound. Kwarzyk with a great outlet pass. Uses the body, gets two, and he's fouled in the act of shooting. I'll tell you, he's one of the smartest small ball players and one of the smartest men going to the hoop as far as protecting. Here he comes down the hoop now. He's going to the hoop. He crosses under the bucket, uses his body to protect himself, and lays it in and draws a foul. Beautifully executed. He is the leading, the leading field goal percentage shooter in the league, 69%. He's trying to meet the minimum number of field goals required to qualify. He's got 139 going into the game. The requirement through today's game is 137. But he does lead the league. But he's going to have to shoot more. He, he should have won it last year, but didn't shoot enough. Now it is 68 to 65, the lead of 13. Maravich with the ball. The team in dark. 
with Kelly going to the hoop, missing it, and Walton again with a great outlet pass. It's a three-on-one break. Lucas with a great playmaking effort and a foul on the play. Sure was he. But Gus, the key to the play is Walton with the release. Well, that's the big key right there. Before Here he comes now. We miss the release. He gives the ball up. Holland draws a foul. That is the fourth foul against Pete Maravich and could decidedly affect the outcome of the game. It is a 13-point lead, but Maravich has been their big gun. Very much. He's carrying the load for him, too. Now we have 22 points for Lionel Holland. When Maravich has scored 40 or more last year, New Orleans was 10-3. and three. For those of you who may be doubting Thomas's and say, a man who scores a lot, you don't win. With Maravich, it's gone the other way. It's 70 to 55, 915 to go in the third quarter. The team in white, Portland leading. They're the world champ. And James has it stolen by Hollins, and he fouled him. Boy, he made a big steal right on the top of the line. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to see that one again or not, but uh, he was right there. That is his fourth foul, Gus. So Hollins is going to have to come out of the ball game soon with four fouls. That is Watts in the ball game. Slick coming on for Maravich, who has to come out of there. Goodrich making his move on a former UCLA star, Bill Walton. And a great play. It's lost by Goodrich. There he is. Uh, he's a man that just does it all for him. He sets the plays up. He blocks the shots for him. He gets to take rebounds and makes the outlet. Now Portland brings it up. Nine minutes to go. 70 to 55. It has been at times, as Gus, you have said, a clinic here in Portland. The fans enjoying it. Kelly tries to steal it away, and they've called a foul on the guy from Stanford. Well, he be mine, it'll be Bill Walton. He brought that foul on himself. He gave the man too much room to go one way, and he went the other way, and he couldn't make up the deficit. So it will be against the Jazz, the third team foul. It is a second team foul situation against the Blazers. Not a shooting foul. Lucas double pumping on Kelly. Means Walton's a loose somewhere. Hollins missing outside, and that is Lucas underneath. Oh, he fouled his way by Kelly. Well, he just took that ball and went to the hoop with all the authority that he normally does. A 20-point lead, and we have a timeout called by New Orleans. They are being split by the Portland Trailblazers. And the crowd is roaring. We have third period situation with eight and a half to go, 72 to 55. We're back here in Portland, and there's a shot of Elgin Baylor, or behind Rich Kelly, just about to sit down. He is sitting down. You can't see him behind number 53, but uh, with him in the jacket, the leather jacket, is Bill Bertka, his assistant coach. There's Elgin sitting down now. What a performer, Elgin Baylor. Tell you, he's one of those guys that you could never write a book about because uh, they say he couldn't do this, he couldn't do that, he could do that, and you come out and try to do him one way, and he'd completely do the other thing. I mean, he was the type of guy that you could learn something from when playing basketball. It was a, it was a, a psych job in itself, just knowing that you had to play against it. No doubt about it, one of the great small rebounders I've ever seen in the NBA. I can recall battles between Gus Johnson and Elgin Baylor up front. We're back to live action here. That's Aaron James with the ball, representing New Orleans. Gail Goodrich trying to go inside to Chuck Robinson. Back over to Stumpy, double team, and he hits Watts. Notice how they'll give Watts the outside shot, and they'll double team Gail. Well, that's a problem there when you have Slick in the game and Gail's uh, shooting the ball, or if Pete's in there, uh, they can't afford to sag back and uh, let him have that shot and double team somebody else. I guess really one of the reasons they uh, traded off Slick in Seattle was because of Gus Williams. Coming into his own. Yes, sir. That's Forzik underneath. It is 72 to 72-55 with eight minutes to go in the third quarter here. Walton setting a pick. That's good. If the ball hits the top of the backboard this year, it's in play. It's in as long as it doesn't go over in back of the basket. That's Slick Watts with it, 74-55. In years gone by, they used to call a play on top of the board. They call it out of bounds. Not anymore. Maybe things will go for Luke now. That one there rolled all over and fell in. Robinson is corked from behind. And the man who corked him was Lucas. Luke now has two fouls, and he's not too pleased about it. They look for Truck right now. They bring the ball into him. He's going baseline. He gives a nice fake right here, and he gets Luke up in the air and gets a foul. So Truck Robinson, nicknamed because he resembles a truck. <laughs> <laughs> he really goes to the hoop. <laughs> With authority. He's yeah. a very strong young man. No doubt about it. Leonard Truck Robinson, drafted number two by Washington, went from Washington to Atlanta, in a switch of number ones plus Tom Henderson. And both teams come out all right in the trade. A free agent in June and picked up by this club. Now it's 74-56.
The Blazers leading over the Jazz. Seven and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Twardzik battling Goodrich, stolen away by Kelly. Kelly against the smallest man on the field. He boots it. Twardzik bothered him. That's the problem. When you get a guy that's seven foot trying to dribble the length of the basketball court and he's got any kind of pressure, what he should have did was stop, held the ball up, and give it off to a guard. Kelly at seven feet and Twardzik a tall 7-1. I think they fudge a little on that. <laughs> That's Walton with it inside. He's finding Lucas. He's got it and he's fouled and knocked down and he's all right. Well, like I said, things are starting to go his way now. I think he's hit his last four or five hoops in a row and uh, they're falling in from all angles. The Los Angeles Lakers were beaten at Indiana this afternoon, 104 to 103. And that thud you heard was Los Angeles at 17 and 21 in the Pacific Division selling. They're going to have to turn that around. Yes, right? yes, yes. I guess with... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar getting his game down. They could turn it around and still get in the playoffs. Well, if any one man can turn it around, I'd say Kareem can do it. Now Watts brings it up, and it's 77 to 56. The lead is 11 for Portland with seven minutes to go. We're in the third quarter. That's Aaron James. Double pump. He finally gets gross off stride. Misses it. Robinson climbs all over towards it. Well, I mean, he went after that ball, too. He just, yeah, he just got run over by a Mack truck. <laughs> that is the second foul against the big guy. He didn't like the call. From Tennessee State. Truck Robinson, 6'7", 230. Lewis Schaefel calls him one of the top five forwards in the NBA. That's why he made the move to get it. At the line, Dave Torczyk. Torczyk from Old Dominion. Very steady ball player. Hardly makes any mistakes. Oddly enough, he was drafted by the Blazers in 72, but played in the ABA. Mm -hmm. Played again. Did you play in the ABA? You never played, yeah, I was a uh, player coach there in uh, 73, my last year before I retired. How well did he do in the ABA? Fairly well. Fairly well. Well, he does it all now with this club. At least he's smart. Smart ball player. That's Goodrich moving on. And Chuck Robinson. Good effort underneath by Walton. Watts has it. Back over to Kelly. Kelly eluding Bob Gross. Very good pass. He pulled uh, Walton and uh, Twarzyk to the hoop and laid it off to uh, the man going. Six and a half to go. Third quarter. The lead is 11. Portland has had the lead throughout most of the game. Down by three early in the first quarter. Roared back to take a 10-point lead in the first period. Lucas underneath. A 14-point lead in the second quarter and a 20-point lead in the third quarter. They now they lead 81-58. Jerry, they beat you from any way they can. They don't care how they beat you. This is a better Portland club than last year, Gus. No doubt about it. More sound, you know. And they've got the same depth, but they've got the experience now. They know they can win, which is so important in the NBA. In any sport, I guess. Yes. I guess that's what's happened to Denver in football. And you'll watch Super Sunday next week on CBS. Truck Robinson. Strong. Robinson, 15 points. Robinson came into the game with an average of 22 on the year. Now it's 25 points for Lionel Hollins. He might get 40. Might also get a Chevy Award today. Got my vote so far. 83 to 60. Walton with a rebound. Here's the outlet pass. But Watts is there against Gross. Now Hollins back over to Gross. Robinson with a rebound. The top rebounder in the NBA, Truck Robinson. Number 21 against Maurice Lucas. Good move and a foul on the play. Driving to the hoop is Aaron James. Foul going to be called against Portland. Uh, Lionel Hollins has another foul. That's his fifth. So with five fouls on Lionel Hollins, 5.20 to go third period. He'll come out. The Blazers lead 83 to 60. Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, we have three exciting events, including, of course, the Super Bowl preview, the flavor and romance of historic New Orleans, and the dazzling Superdome. And, of course, the teams who will meet on the following day, that's Saturday at 3.30 on the CBS Sports Spectacular. A big day for CBS. And next week, Gus Johnson, as we see coming into the ball game, a mass substitution now coming into the ball game for the Portland Trailblazers for the first time is T.R. Dunn. A rookie, the only rookie on the roster, he was drafted number two by him. He's out of Alabama. And he's a fine one, too. He's got tremendous sleeping ability. Going to be a good rookie. You're watching Aaron James at the foul line. Missed for New Orleans. 
83 to 65, 20 to go in the third quarter. James has been the starting, he has been the starting forward at 6'8". He's the first man ever selected by the original Jazz. Holland's career high is 36. He's out of the ball game in foul trouble. He's got 25. That's Walton in the middle. Walton trying to pass. Kelly finally blocks one. Taken away by Torzik and knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to New Orleans. Very good hustle right there. Uh, right now, uh, Robinson has eight rebounds, and Walton has 13 of them. So that is the, as we have some mass substitutions, Paul Griffin coming back into the game. Chuck Robinson comes out. Rich Kelly goes out. Back into the ball game, Joe Merriweather. Merriweather's had the flu. He's had some knee problems. Back in the ball game, Pete Maravich. Maravich and Watts on the back line up against Kordzik. There's Griffin outside. In and out on the rebound. Taken away by Walton. Merriweather is furious. Kelly is no James is bad. Kelly was fouled on the play and no whistle. 4.49 to go in the third quarter. That's Walton looking for the pass. Now he goes for the shot. A little hard. In fact, the rookie. There's a rookie right there in time showing his leaping ability and being in the right place. So T.R. Dunn comes up and bangs in two. His 57th points of the year. He's only played in 23 games. Watts is against Fordzik. 85 to 61. The lead of 14. Maravich moving past one man. That is not Watts' best shot. He normally penetrates. On the floor, Aaron James going to the hoop and he might have given the elbow as he went in. Yeah, he did. Offensive foul. Good call. There's Walton right there again. Just uh, Here's the play again right here. James is going to the hoop. Here's Walton with his intimidation. Blocks the shot. Gets the offensive foul on the boot. Yes, I don't know. Uh, people watching this telecast here in Portland, Oregon, I don't know whether they realize what they have meant to the Portland club. The Blazer Mania has done some kind of a job to help win the world championship. Believe me, Jerry, I'm sure they're aware of it. They have been uh, just... Uh, very much involved with this ball club. We saw it last night in Detroit's game. They helped bring this team back. We got a foul and an injury. Walton is limping on his right knee. Same one that he hurt last night. Check the silence in the Coliseum right now. That is Ron Culp, who has been selected already. Former Cleveland trainer. Fourth year here with Portland. Very competent. The man in blue, of course, Jack Ramsey. Ron Culp was the uh, a former Bowling Green State University trainer. Our thanks to John White, the public relations director here. Walton's all right. Former reporter here, 15 years with the Portland, Oregon Journal. Sports editor, former sports editor, doing a fine job here under Herman Sarkowski and Lawrence Weinberg. Harry Glickman, of course, the executive vice president of the Portland Trailblazers. Stu Inman, the vice president, has done a fine job also. It's been a great team effort with the fans in the front office as well. That's Slick Watts. Over to Maravich. Maravich with a double pump. Doesn't go. Back over to Watts. Four seconds to shoot. Tough I'm not sure he shot that shot twice now. And he's hit it both times. Hello, Slick Watts. 85-63. <laughs> 30 to go. Third quarter. That's T.R. Dunn. Dunn out of Alabama. That's Walt. Merriweather rebounding. Over to Watts. He will penetrate well. Going to the hoop, fine shot. Very, very good move. He went there and laid the ball right up over Walton's hand. The kick from Grambling, Aaron James scoring. That makes it 85 to 65. Only 20-point lead. Just 20. The natives are a little restless. They want to go for the juggler vein. Lucas does, gets another two. Lucas now has 15. He My thought, man is Hollins with 25. I think he thought about dunking that time and decided just to put it in the hoop. Watts going with one from the left side. Walton off his fingers, out of bounds. It goes. Last touch by Watts. Back in the ball game, Larry Steele and Tom Owens. Also coming into the ball game, Gus Bailey. We have a timeout with two minutes, 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. The score, Blazers 87, Jazz 65. You're looking at a man on the left who really could move the basketball, Dick McGuire. Super coach, very good coach. He uh, directed the Knicks for a while, and uh, I enjoyed uh, the times that I have sat down and talked with John. John White, of course, on the right, the PR man we were talking about, former writer, done a good job here. Back to live action, 87 to 65, two minutes and 48 seconds to go. We're in the third quarter. T.R. Dunn is guarding Pete Maravich over to Slick Watts, guarded now by Johnny Davis. Maravich. Finding the touch outside. Maravich is pumped in now, 18. 
And he has to keep on doing that, too. Keeps in foul trouble, though. Yeah. Holland's career high is 43 points. And Holland's won't make that now because he's in foul trouble. T.R. Dunn with an air ball, but Larry Steele gets it and whacks it home. Steele's first two points in the afternoon. Yeah, they just keep coming at you, too. They bring him off the bench. Everywhere. In droves. And it is Fans now 89 to 67. Two minutes and 14 seconds to go. Will the pistol get hot and bring him back? Larry Steele as Maravich misses Johnny Davis. Davis wore number 18 last night. Somebody stole his uniform. A whistle, a foul underneath, or a three-second violation. Oh, it's three. Crowd doesn't like it. Yeah, he just got hung up in there and didn't know what to do with the ball. Shoot it or give it up. Now Watts will bring it up underneath Joe Merriweather against Tom Owens. Well, not of the ball game. Owens is in underneath. One minute, 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. There might be a backcourt foul against Slick Watts. Elgin Baylor talking before the game in the hotel, visiting with Gus and myself, was saying that one of the things about New Orleans this year that's improved them has been their rebounding. They have done a much better job. There is Elgin now on the bench in the white, or rather in the blue. I know he's probably wishing he could give him something right now, a little extra. <laughs> he says we're still quite a bit away from turning this thing around. The Jazz, as you know, now in their fourth year of existence. Johnny Davis now has four points. They put on the all-court press, the trap, and breaking it now, bringing it up. The Jazz going with Gus Bailey. Over to Watts. Watts has a three on two. Hits the open man, and Merriweather blows the dunk. He was foul on the play, and that's why he blew it. Big guy that hit him was Tom Owens at 6'10". This is basketball. He's bringing the ball down the fast break. He pulls the big man off to him. He lays the ball off the man. He missed the dunk. Got fouled on it, though. Owens hit him, and Merriweather goes to the line. Out of Southern Illinois, drafted number one by Houston. Now 24. He was the ninth leading NBA shooter last year. Joe Merriweather made the all-rookie team. Out of Phoenix City, Alabama. Came from Atlanta for a number one choice in 78 and future consideration. Just that usually means money, doesn't it? I think so. Wasn't he a runner-up in, in some kind of a slam dunk contest? I don't know whether he was the runner-up last year or not. I know he was up high. Yeah, he was in there. Owens is there. This year, of course, it's the horse contest at halftime. That's Boris Lucas. 17. What a quarter he's had. 15 of the quarter. How many in a row? Against Portland. One minute, 27 to go. Lucas has had a hot hand. Seven field goals in the quarter. One minute, 20 seconds to go. 93 to 69. The Blazers blowing them out. And a timeout has been called. An injury timeout. Ron Culp comes out. Wants to check now and see if the eye of Tom Owens is okay. I think he's got a little cut there on it. Owens has had a traveling man's life. You saw him in the ABA. I'm yes, sure you, I did. You're an assistant coach in the yes, ABA, yes, as you said. Yes, for a year there with uh, Indiana. And uh, I think Tom was with, uh, with Carolina or Virginia Squires at the time. And um, played a pretty good game then. They made a move here to pick him up from Houston for Robin Jones. That trade was engineered. Now he backs Walton up. Well, right now the trade doesn't look bad. I watched him last night, and uh, he seems weak, but uh, he does a sufficient job of uh, letting Walton get a rest. He hasn't hurt him at all today. No question about it. He, he's not the most graceful-looking center in the league, but he gets the job done. Yes. Ooh. Totally you you brought it up a moment ago about... How many Lucas had hit in a row in this period, and he's got quite a streak going now. Yes, he does. Uh, he's 7 for 9 for the period and 7 straight, and uh, that's not saying uh, he's not putting the ball in a hole, is it? He started out slowly, Very 1 out slow. of 7. Now he's gone 7 straight in the quarter, and for the game he's 8 for 16, so he's turned it around. All Gus, it, you, when you play, did you ever start that badly? As I recall, you at times could go on a streak that, that you were known as a streak shooter. Right. Well, I'll tell you something. Sometimes you just uh, you go out and uh, maybe you uh, blow an easy shot and then you start thinking. Anytime a basketball player starts thinking about it, he's in trouble, you know. I want to get into the best forward you've ever played against in the NBA. We're going to talk about it in a minute, but I do want to remind everyone that Super Sunday comes up, as you know, next week. Something to really look forward to. And Super Sunday featuring, of course, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 12. That'll be coming up about 3 o'clock. But prior to that, the Phoenix Open and, of course, 
the NBA with two games. You're going to be, where are you going to be next week, in Boston? Yeah, I have uh, Boston and Portland, and I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, Boston's having some problems, and uh, Portland seems to have everything in order, so we'll see what goes down. You'll have a lot of stories to tell about that Boston club with a change in coaching, Tommy Heinsenhock. For sure. But back to live action, that's Larry Steele pumping one up. Rebounded by Joe Merriweather. Great block by T.R. Dunn. Taken back by Merriweather. A minute and four to go, third quarter, 93 to 69. That's Merriweather having it taken away by Owens. Owens has a patch over that eye, it looks like. Yeah, big one. So it's the right eye. Tom Owens was hit on. He's all right. They patched him up. One. Davis, look at that quick first step. Oh, something else. So quick he ran into his own man. Sure, I tell you, I'd like to say something about Tom. He's playing out there playing with Gus. He's got a patch, and he's still running him down the floor. 41 seconds to go in the third quarter. Maravich is going to try and get hot. This is the bank shot. Griffin goes up. Griffin looks like he's going to be around for a number of years. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a real scrapper. He doesn't mind mixing it up. He goes to the hoop, and he shoots very well. It is very unusual. You see a number five draft choice, such as number 30, make a ball club. Well, he's on the club. He's out of Shelby, Michigan, 6'9", 205. Hadn't played very much. 24 years old. This is his second year. He's going for his fourth point. And he's got it. 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. 93 to 71. The Jazz trending the Blazers. Maravich going to try and get him back in it. He leads the NBA in scoring. And Maravich has 18. That's below his average. Johnny Davis trying to work the ball inside. In the ball game for the first time, James McElroy. McElroy. Okay. And Bailey going for Steele. Steele is really mad. They call a foul against Steele. This is rough time, Gus Johnson. Yes, it is. I don't think the fans like that call, but uh, there was definitely an offensive foul. Here we go right now with Owens going up with a shot. It's blocked here by Merriweather. They bring the ball back. They and Steele runs Steel, over him. Yeah, I say that Steele ran into Gus Bailey. So bring it up now. We'll see what can happen here. The double screen is on the left. McElroy eluding his man, missing it. The rebound up and missed. Still fighting for it. Griffin can't hang on to it. Can't find the handle and loses it. He's a hustler. I think they're going to find something in him. Looks all right. That marks the end of the third quarter. At the end of three, the Blazers 93, the Jazz 71. We are back here in Portland, and be sure and stay tuned with us for the MVP award at the conclusion of the game. Gus Johnson and Jerry Gross. Gus, you played nine years in the NBA. You're in the ABA. Who's the best forward you ever played against? I would have to say the all-time would be Elgin, and then they could go down the line. There's so many tremendous uh, forwards in the league in my time that uh, it's hard to single out any one. But if I had to, I would probably go with Elgin, Dave DeBusher, Pettit, Jerry Lucas, Spencer Haywood. Just there's a list of them. You could go on for days. But you'd start with Elgin, huh? Oh, uh, right at the then, top of the list. And then Dave DeBusher. It is 93 to 71 with 11:46 to go in the game. The team in dark uniforms. James McElroy over to Joe Merriweather, and Merriweather cans it. Almost travel on the play, 11 and a half to go. The Jazz in dark, Portland in white, and Portland leads 93 to 73. Johnny Davis missing, and the rebound to T.R. Dunn. Dunn was hard early. He's too soft on this one. Griffin rebounds over to Maravich. Maravich to McElroy. He misses the shot, but he had great control. McElroy grabbing it, and he's fouled. McElroy started at guard when Stumpy was injured last year. Made a nice pass there and get a ball up. Uh, I think he Peter just went to the ball, went to the hoop with the authority. He might have drawn the uh, foul and uh, gotten a shot. Maravich runs around, tries to find a pick, and then goes anyway. Rebounded underneath, taken away by Larry Steele, who told me before the game he didn't think he'd play. Looks all right. Looks He's dragging right that foot though. Must have shot the foot up. Here's the hook by Owens. He follows. He's all over him. All over the back of three players. Still shooting. Almost blocked in on the play. Rebounded up and missed by T.R. Dunn and a foul underneath. They had exactly three or four shots at that hoop, and T.R. Dunn winds up with the ball, drawing the foul right there. That's just great hustle right there. You said it before, Gus. Portland, the number one defensive team in the NBA. They're only eighth in offense, but 
New Orleans is 15th in defense and 11th in offense. Yeah, but you can see why Portland is. I mean, they go out and force the issue. They don't sit back and wait. They are the attacker. They scramble for the ball as T.R. Dunn is at the line. And the rookie looking for his third point. The crowd hollering, hoping, and encouraging. I think he's just a little tight. He'll loosen up. You try so hard when you come off the bench as a rookie. Do you recall your rookie year? Well, I was, like, maybe fortunate. I started in my rookie year, but during the exhibition season, it was very horrible. I thought that I wasn't going to be able to play the game. My first five games, I think I scored a total of three points. Lloyd Neal comes up with the ball as Maravich cannot do anything with it. Larry Steele on the fly. T.R. tips it up and misses. Oh, it's tipped it up once, twice, misses, and finally the rebound taken off by Truck Robinson. Ten and a half minutes to go, 94-73. Driving and scoring Merriweather. Very nice. Blazers. Blazers now lead 94-75. Davis trying to slow things down. Owens trying to move underneath against Merriweather. It happens in a game like this. When you're 20 points ahead, you get a little lack of days going to go seesaw. Larry Steele has four. Larry Steele. We have a score coming up from Seattle. We'll pass along to you. Robinson scoring, making it now 96 to 77. 9.49 to go in this one. The action in Portland. He's been very impressive. Uh, I haven't seen the uh, Jazz this year, but uh, he looks well. Robinson has banged in 17. In Seattle, the Supersonics lead 80 to 73 over Golden State. Six points now for Scaly. It's on both sides. Yeah, you can't let him set. That's one thing he you can't let him get his feet together because he can shoot that ball. Good corner shooter, as you saw. Maravich going inside to Merriweather. He altered his shot. And got yes, it. he looks he looks well in there for his knee to be bothering him. Merriweather now has ten. Nine minutes and twelve seconds to go. 98-79. New Orleans trying to make a go of it. Bring him back. McElroy over to Maravich. Stolen away by Dunn. That's Steele coming back, two on one. Davis. Great defensive effort by Merriweather. Sensational. I don't know about that one. McElroy goes in for the drive and scores. He come back and made a tough move out of that right there. I don't know about that last play. It could have went either way, I believe. Now it is 98 to 81. The lead has been cut to 17. At one time, it was a 24-point lead. Cut down to 18 points, but the big guns are on the bench. Lloyd Neal, a lot of pushing away from the ball, and John Vanek says, I have the foul. It's getting a little raggedy now, and officials have to stay on their job, and you have to give them credit. They're doing a very good job of keeping the uh, game organized. Hey, that Philadelphia club, Gus Johnson, is it a better team this year than last year? Uh, I think they're a much better ball club uh, than what they were last year. They've got uh, a little more experience now, and uh, I think uh, Billy might help them out. Billy Cunningham moving from... Uh, Consultant's role, the analyst role, coaching now the 76ers. Fifth foul on Maravich. Dunn gets the touch outside. The crowd roars. So they like him here. He's a favorite. And they hit the 100 mark. 100 to 81 with eight minutes and nine seconds to go in the game. Portland in white leading. Paul Griffin of New Orleans with the ball. He moves better inside. Outside. Whacking that one in. James McElroy. Three-pointer there. Oh, McElroy. Drops it in. More points for him. 7.50 to go. 100 to 83. Good pick set by Lloyd Neal. Rattled the teeth of Griffin. Back in the corner with plenty of time. Missing the shot. Steal. Rebounded by Robinson. Robinson has a lot of rebounds. McElroy inside. Looks like he's trying to do it all by himself right now. McElroy has, hand. He's got six points in the ball game. Truck Robinson rebounding well. Has done a good job for New Orleans. Coming into the game, the 14th top scorer now has 10 rebounds in the game. Neil shot. Neil shot is blocked by Merriweather. 100 to 85. All alone, Johnny Davis. They make the nice, easy, simple play. They do it when it has to be done. They're never in a hurry. They're very patient, and patience is something that you need in this league. Davis only 6'2", jumps as if he was 6'7". McElroy is fouled, I believe, by Davis on the play. Seven minutes to go. Coming into the ball game, Corky Calhoun. Coming out of the ball game, Larry Steele. Larry said that he injured that foot in warm-up last night, yet he's played in both games. Coming out of the game, T.R. Dunn. Coming back into the game, Lionel Holland. The round of applause is for T.R. Dunn. Maravich launches one. 
Kidd has not been consistent outside. No, he hasn't. Six minutes, 55 seconds to go. 102 to 85. Hollins has it blocked by Merriweather. Out of bounds it goes. It'll belong to Portland. They should have played like that in the first uh, half of the game. It might have been a more interesting game. They blew it open in the third quarter, outscoring New Orleans 34 to 21. Now we'll watch Hollins and see what he can do. Hollins has 25, hasn't played very much. He's been in foul trouble. Lloyd Neal inside, trying to get that left leg back in shape. Made a pretty good move. Very good move. I'll tell you, he doesn't look like he does very much on the basketball floor. He's a tremendous rebounder. He's steady on the offense, and he hardly makes any mistakes. He has really fought back with that injury to his knee and yes. played under great adversity. Here comes Portland again. Calhoun with the rebound. It's now 104 to 85. 618 to go. McElroy stole the ball and Hollins gets it back. That's Davis. Just like the old Celtics, hit the open man. That's that's what basketball is about. I mean, you can sit and watch a game like this and you have to enjoy it because it's just like they're putting a clinic on. McElroy missing and Neal with the rebound. If they can get 30 good minutes out of Neal. They're going to be awful tough going down to the wire. Right now. The people in Portland, Oregon are in a furor. Very strong play right here by Mac uh, Elroy. Very strong. A timeout with 5.52 to go in the game. The score, Portland 106, New Orleans 85. Next Sunday, we'll have more regional NBA coverage here on CBS. Portland will meet Boston. Gus Johnson will be there with Don Cricky. Chicago goes against Detroit. I'll be handling the play-by-play, -play, along with the former great out of Milwaukee and San Diego, John McLaughlin. And we advise that you consult your local listings for the game in your area. That'll be next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, right here on CBS, prior, of course, to the Phoenix Open and the Super Bowl coverage. Should be a great Sunday. Gus, we have 5.52 to go, and the Blazers look like they're going to win their 39th in a row. No question about it. 106 to 85. Boy, Davis just went up and completely out-jumped him on that. Right up in the rafters on that yes. one. Lloyd Neal tries the shot and misses outside. Owens with the rebound, saves it. Neal grabs it. Back over to Owens. Calhoun up front, working along with Owens and with Lloyd Neal. That's Hollins. Hollins has been phenomenal. 25 points. Didn't play in the fourth quarter very much. Shot outside and inside. Oh, it's missing. Rebounded and Ooh. down goes Neil. Neil and Griffin. Very strong. Huh? He looks like he's a strong man. He's got a lot of uh, finesse inside there. A Lloyd Neal. Lloyd Neal, a big guy, will be jumping now. Neal at 6'7 against Griffin at 6'9. Griffin, a 205 pounder. Neal, a 225 pounder. McElroy. McElroy with the ball brings it up. Goodrich, who has been playing well, but has not scored very much in this one. Goodrich has eight points. 19 for Truck Robinson. Five minutes to go in the game. 106 to 87. The Portland Trailblazers going for their 39th in a row here at home, including playoffs, and 21st straight on this court this year. That is Holland. Give Lionel 27 big ones. He's hot and he knows it. He's looking for the ball and he's taking the good shots. He's not forcing anything either. Taking good shots. 108-87. Portland on top. That's Truck Robinson with an air ball practically, okay. but it hit the backboard. Those are the kind of shots I'm talking about. Uh, they're there and uh, anybody can shoot that 90-footer. That's Hollins trying to go again. Neal with a rebound. Good action underneath. Lloyd Neal powers his way inside. Power is just what he did. He just went up and took the hoop from him. Jack Ramsey said last year in the first week, if Neal comes along, he said to me one day with a wink, the first telecast CBS did here, we're going to have some fun. And he did get well, almost. And now, if he comes back and can play 30 minutes, Lloyd Neal's going to be a big asset He to could that. be one of the key to this, to this ball club, too, because for the simple fact that there are times when they won't be able to play Walton and Neal will have to play center because of uh, Owens won't be able to play some of the other centers. That was the third foul against Robinson as Hollins misses in tight. The tip followed, and Merriweather with a rebound. Throws it into the first row. Right into the first row. Four minutes and eight seconds to go. 110-87, Portland leading New Orleans. Portland in white. Been a battle of second stringers in the last 15 minutes. Walton has sat out most of the game in the last 10 minutes. Corky Calhoun missing and Griffin with a rebound. Tough shot. That is Watts with the ball. A pick set by Goodrich. 
And Watts knocks it in. Slick shot well outside today. Yeah, I was watching him in warm-ups. He was shooting it fairly well. They were playing horse out there earlier. Watts has 10 points up against Hollins now, trying to check him. 110 to 89 with three and a half minutes to go in the game. Lloyd Neal with good cut. Just a sound ball player. Lloyd Neal has 10 points in the ball game. Lloyd Neal now going back on defense as Robinson tries to go against him. Griffin with a rebound, draws two shots. I like him. He's a hustler. The report on this kid was he's a hard nose. Here he goes for the rebound after truck shot. He gets inside position. He fights well for it, goes back up with him, and gets fouled by Neal inside. So the kid goes to the line. Played 81 games last year. Passes well, rebounds as you have seen well. Matter of fact, he led the club in shooting last year, 54.5%. And will probably get better. Of course, he gets most of his shots in and around the basket. Well, he shot a jumper a couple of them. It was, uh, looked very decent. Portland 112, New Orleans 91. Three minutes and 13 seconds left to go from Portland, Oregon. And nobody has left. No one has gone out of here yet. <laughs> Boy, that's some great fans, huh? Laser mania. They know they get a lot of thrills even in the last minute of the ball game. Calhoun with a spinning, twisting pass over to Owens. That time it went beyond. Now that is the call up above on top of the backboard. Beyond, that's out of bounds. That's out of bounds. 112-91, 2.54 to go in the game. Super Bowl Sunday next Sunday. We invite all of you to join us right here on the dial starting at 10 in the morning. What a day of television that will be. Lloyd Neal with a rebound. Here he goes for the rebound after truck shot. He gets inside position. He fights well for it. Goes back up with him. He gets fouled by Neal inside. So the kid goes to the line. Played 81 games last year. Passes well. Rebounds as you have seen well. Matter of fact, he led the club in shooting last year. 54.5%. And will probably get better. Of course, he gets most of his shots in and around the basket. Well, he shot a jumper a couple of them. It was, uh, looked very decent. Portland 112, New Orleans 91. Three minutes and 13 seconds left to go from Portland, Oregon. And nobody has left. No one has gone out of here yet. <laughs> Boy, that's some great fans, huh? Laser mania. They know they get a lot of thrills even in the last minute of the ball game. Calhoun with a spinning, twisting pass over to Owens. That time it went beyond. Now that is the call up above on top of the backboard. Beyond, that's out of bounds. That's out of bounds. 112-91, 2.54 to go in the game. Super Bowl Sunday next Sunday. We invite all of you to join us right here on the dial starting at 10 in the morning. What a day of television that will be. Lloyd Neal with a rebound over to Holland. Holland with a super game, 27 points. And they're all so unselfish. They don't mind passing the ball or nothing. Neal with quite a battle with Paul Griffin. Griffin comes up with it, steals it away from Owen. That is James, Aaron James with it, driving by Calhoun. Calhoun gets a piece of it. Two minutes and 26 seconds to go. You mean to tell me that, how would you compare Dave DeBusher? Well, we'll talk about DeBusher and Baylor when we come back. We have 226 to go, Gus Johnson, and the Blazers lead 112-91. We only have 226 to go, Gus Johnson. You mentioned Dave DeBusher and Elgin Baylor as the two toughest forwards you played against in the NBA. Can you compare them even further? Well, you know, it's kind of tough to compare them, Jerry, because they play two different styles. Uh, Dave was a perim uh, perimeter shooter. Elgin, he could do it all. You know, like, I mean, if you checked his stats, uh, probably his field goal percentage wasn't uh, as high as Dave's or, you know, whatever. But uh, as far as a 6'5 man's concerned, rebounding, I would say Elgin had the strongest hands in the league. He could put the ball in his hand, and you could not knock it out of, out of, out of both of his hands. You know, There was this trick he showed me in an airport one day where uh, he could take the quarters out of your hand before he could close your hand up. You know, I mean, amazingly quick hands, and could crash the offensive board. Yeah. I saw him get 71 once in the garden when everyone felt sorry for him as he was coming off a knee operation. Oh, 71 big ones. Yes. Elgin Baylor. Now yes. he's got the problems of the world oh, trying to turn shoulder. this club around. Yes. At the line, you see Aaron James. That's the future for New Orleans. No question about it. They're yes. going to have to go with the young people. Yep. Aaron James now getting that one. James has scored in the game eight points. There's a foul. 
Paul Griffin, a little eager. Hadn't played too much, but he's getting his shot here. Yeah, he's a good hustler. You know, I mean, he does a lot of fundamental things well on the floor for him. When you get into a game like this, this is this is what used to be known affectionately as garbage, garbage time. time. Well, you and know, that's like, an affectionate term. Yes, 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 yes. It doesn't mean that the players are not playing anymore. No, it means they're all trying to get the the garbage shot. Right. Get the average up. That's Man. Merriweather. Good pass over to James. Rebounded by Owen. Owens will fool you. He's going to help this ball club. Yeah, I, I think he will. He has uh, done a fine job uh, watching him uh, this evening. Very good job. Calhoun playing up front now. He did a great job last year. Griffin just very anxious. They're really sagging off on the weak side, playing what looks like a zone defense. Goodrich brings it up. Of course, that is illegal. And Goodrich scoring on the fly. Goodrich with a minute and 40 makes it 112 to 94. The Blazers leading the Jazz and Portland trying to win their 39th in a row, including playoffs on this court. This year it'll be 21 and 0. They have the best record in the NBA. You have seen why this afternoon. And they'll probably continue to play like that. They've got a well-coached ball club and they're well-disciplined. Good move by the big guy. Hey, a lot could be said to Jack McKinney, too, the assistant coach here, who's done a good job. Yes, he has. Helping Jack Ramsey. Owens is really working. Owens having a big day. So Tom Owens has come on for nine points. The high man in the ball game is Lionel Hollins with 27. He had 11 in the first period and eight in the second. Here we go now. Uh, Neal makes a pass inside, and uh, Owens gives a good fake, goes up, draws a three-point play. So Owens at the foul line. That's a good touch at the foul line. It's 76 and a half percent. His average is six. But Owens right now has banged in ten. Slick Watts counters back, misses. Owens up to the rebound. That's rebounding Lloyd Neal. One minute to go in the game. We'll be announcing our most valuable player at the conclusion of the game. Neal driving and scoring. 117, 119 now to 94. Now they're showing us just a little bit of their depth. They haven't uh, had a starter on the floor in about five or six minutes, and they're doing an excellent job of playing out here. That's Calhoun. Now you know why they stay. Now you know why they stay. They love it. They enjoy basketball here in Portland, Oregon. I'm enjoying this game myself as a spectator. I mean, it's 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 a runaway, but I mean, they're still doing the things that you're supposed to do to be successful if you want to win. Who would believe with a 27-point lead, the crowd would be going bananas? They are. Everybody's hustling. Look at Griffin. Neil didn't hustle too well on that, but Griffin I tell you, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really call this garbage time because these guys are playing excellent basketball right now. Calhoun bringing it over to T.R. Dunn. 21 seconds left to go in the ball game. It is a 121-96 lead for Portland. They've done it all. They've found some reserve strength in the jump ball. Very John, good play. John Vanek and Bernie Fryer have been the officials. Very good play. It was just a, The play would have worked very well. I think Owens was just a little slow on it. Out of bounds he goes with 12 seconds remaining in the game. They give that ball back to Portland, too. Double figures for Bill Walton. 19 points, 14 rebounds, and 7 assists. That's the kind of an afternoon he has had. He has not played here in the fourth quarter. Owens has played it all the way. No basket. No basket. No basket. So they have found double figures from Maurice Lucas with 17. Walton with 19. 27 for Lionel Hollins. 12 for Lloyd Neal and 12 for Tom Owens. You talk about Tom, a little balance, huh, I guy? think Tom Owens has come down here and found himself a home. I really do. They've got, what, seven men in double figures? That's it. That's balance. That's balance. 19 for Robinson, 10 points for Goodrich, and 18 for Maravich. They're the leading men for New Orleans. Aaron James with a good move inside. Six seconds to go in the game, 122 to 98. They're going to hit the century mark, and they do as James keeps hustling. So the lead is 22 with five seconds to go in the game. This one's all over, and Portland has done it for their 39th in a row. The record is 36 in a regular season by Philadelphia. This in this regular season is now 21. 21 straight. Thank you. You are looking at the final score. As the Portland Trailblazers have won another one, they knock off the New Orleans Saints. The final score, Portland 122. New Orleans, 100. The Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award goes to Lionel Hollins.
The Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to Arizona State on behalf of Lionel Hollins. Gus, it has been, it has, it has really been a heck of a game, and I'm sure the fans enjoyed it, and you and I both have, because Portland showed you so much, so much variety. Well, they just do everything that you're supposed to be done on a basketball court in order to be successful, and uh, I think Coach Ramsey and his staff have done a super job with them. They are well-disciplined. They come down, they force uh, Orleans, the Jazz, out of their area. They had them shooting nothing but perimeter jumpers. They didn't give them any second shots at that many in the course of the game, you know. Hey, here's a final score. Just handed to me. Seattle does it again. Len Wilkins has really brought that club along. 99-91. If you had a chance to coach, would you coach in the NBA? I don't think uh, I would want to be a, a head coach right now. I'd like to get into it as an assistant coach, and uh, maybe eventually I'd like to take that challenge. A lot of jobs open. We talked yesterday to Bob Kaufman, and Kaufman says he doesn't want the job in Detroit permanently. There are those who, and Larry Staberman, I understand, today is the new coach. As uh, Phil Johnson got the axe. Yes, yes, yeah. So there are jobs of plentiful in the NBA, and the final score here is 122 to 100, as the Portland Trailblazers have been victorious once again as they knock off New Orleans, and this the first meeting of the two ball clubs this year. The high man in the ball game, as we look at our producer Howard Wright Snyder, who did such a fine job, and also accolades to Peter Blechner. Our director this afternoon, Nick Freeman, our associate producer. And I think Lionel Hollins is going to be joining us briefly as we will be visiting with him as Hollins had a whale of an afternoon as Lionel banged in a total of 27 points. And we are welcoming him to the microphone here and we'll be chatting with him, with Lionel, and talking a little basketball about the Portland Trailblazers. We have him ready to go. Lionel, uh, congratulations on an afternoon that uh, came off a tough evening last night I thought. Yeah it was a good game for us we've had about three in a row that have been close and down to the wire and tonight we came out and had a consistent running game throughout. You had a tough time last night and Gus Johnson and I were talking about your Eric Money war. You two had your hands on each other all night long it looked like. Yeah he was trying to get a little bit physical in a finesse game. <laughs> Gus, I know that uh, as you sit here and look at Lionel Hollins during the game, you remarked how he was really looking for the shot, and he knew he had a good day, but he was looking for the good percentage shot at the end. Well, you can't uh, you can't beat that. Lionel, uh, I think, comes down, and uh, he adds another dimension to uh, Portland's uh, offensive game. He uh, seems to hit the big shot right when they need it, and uh, he makes the key steals a lot of times for him also, and that's important. Well, it just seems like the last few games that's been happening, uh, and I'm just... I've been glad that I've been coming through for it because uh, we need every victory we can get because they're tough to come by. It's nice to be in the right place at the right time and with a winner. Definitely. Yeah. Is this is this a better ball club than last year's club, Lionel? Uh, I think we're more confident. That makes us better. And I think we believe we can win any time and we can win anywhere. And we're going out and we're just playing our game each night. And we're coming out on top most of the time. And that's the attitude you've got to have. If you want to be number one or if you want to win at anything, you have to feel like you can do that. You can't just go out and say, well, we're playing somebody tonight. Because when you're number one, everybody's shooting at you, right? Definitely. Good. The Is the be. Philadelphia club a better club, Lionel, this year under Billy Cunningham? I think they are. They're playing with more intensity. They're playing better defense. And they always had the offensive talent. And they've beaten us pretty bad the time we played them back there. And we beat them in a squeaker here. So they, they're tough, but they're all tough. Sure, yes. Do you notice any difference this year in winning uh, everywhere? Is it tougher in every city this year? Well, this year we've had more pressure winning at home because we have a winning streak. But on the road we go out and we just decide that we're going to play our game and we take it to teams and uh, if they're not ready to play, we are. You know, and We've been winning a lot of ball games on the road this year. Do you think that the fans here realize what an important part they're playing with this ball club now, with this Blazer mania and... Uh, you know, just they don't realize how important. This could be two or three points for you guys at your home court. I think so. I think they realize it. I think they believe they are really a part of this ball club, and they are. And uh, they come on and cheer us on when we're down and behind. And puts you in mind when you were in college. You know, like right. that enthusiasm there. Right. I mean, it makes you want to go out. When and you fight. get behind, you feel like you know you can come back. Lionel, yeah. thanks for visiting with us. Thank you. Good luck to you, Lionel Hollins, wrapping with us here at the end of the game. And don't forget. We're going to have next Saturday the CBS Sports Spectacular at 3.30. And next Sunday will be Super Sunday with the Portland-Boston-Chicago-Detroit NBA games. And the final round of the Phoenix Open, the Super Bowl today, pregame show, and then Super Bowl 12. 
CBS Sports coverage, remember, will begin at 10 o'clock. That'll be next Sunday. The high man in this ballgame was the man we just visited with, Lionel Hollins, who had 27, 17 for Maurice Lucas, 19 points for Bill Walton. He had 14 rebounds and 7 assists, 12 for Lloyd Neal. We also had 13 points for Tom Owens, who did a great job coming off the bench for Jack Ramsey. Maravich with 18, 19 for Robinson. Goodrich had 10 along with Watts, 12 for James, and 10 for Merriweather. So this is Jerry Gross along with Gus Johnson saying goodbye from the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon. Final score, 122 to 100, Portland over New Orleans. The NBA is a presentation of CBS Sports.